Hello and welcome to another episode. This is going to be exciting. Now this is going out on the Course Creators podcast and it's a podcast about podcasting with a master podcaster. So we are going to be talking today all about how important it is to consider, and I say consider, um, consider thinking about adding podcasting to your repertoire of reach, your media, your way of engaging with your audience, building up some reputation for yourself, sharing your knowledge and expertise with the world, and of course, potentially making another income stream as well. If you are a coach, a consultant, a course creator, an expert, building a business of any kind online, podcasting is one of the many ways that you can get out there, get seen, get found, get heard and get clients. So today we have Mr. Michael Sharkey, who is the podcast host of Your Podcast Coach, and he is an expert in all things podcasting. So great to have you here, Michael. Sarah, it's great to be with you. Thank you for um, thank you for uh, for allowing me to come on and talk about the thing that I love the most, which is the power of spoken word and, and creating a meaningful and unique podcast. It's so good. And we are today going to be picking Michael's brain for a few tips on what should we consider when we set up a podcast? What kind of things should we think about before we make that decision? What do we do when we've decided to make the decision? Where do we even begin? <laughs> and what kind of steps might a course creator go through if you are going, right, I'm going to put this podcast together. I'm going to go live. How do I now fill this with stuff that's going to attract my target audience and give them great fun, good entertainment, good information as well. So we're we'll picking away and be sharing all of that with you on this show. Now before we get there, uh, Mike and I were just chatting before we came on today. Uh, we, <laughs> we've had to rearrange this appointment a couple of times because I've just moved uh, 2,300 kilometres away from the north of Western Australia down to the south of Western Australia and I was feeling a bit sorry for myself because it's been a tough move <laughs> but Michael then went and trumped me big time so <laughs> yes. Michael you've done a pretty epic move yourself recently hey. I did. I moved from St. Petersburg, Florida, which is on the west coast of Florida, uh, down to the southern part of Mexico in Oaxaca de Juarez. So we rented a house down here and we, my family basically said, look, we're not going to take anything unless it fits in a suitcase or in our carry-on bag. So, you know, basically it was a suitcase, a carry-on bag and a few pets, mind you, that we actually made the trek with. But uh, we we figured it all out, and um, it took a it took uh, some logistics, but we're here. And uh, as I was commenting before we started, I think you're more set up than me because I didn't even get to move my furniture. So when we got here, it's been like you know kind of a cool thing here in Mexico to buy authentic furniture, but that takes some time. So you know the backdrop's a little different than normally I would have, but you know nonetheless, you're there and I'm here, so we made it. Amazing. We have made it. We are here. Now I'm excited. I started my podcast back in, I think it was early 2015. You know, and I, I was really excited. Predominantly my motivations were reaching more people with my message. You know, I, my personal goals are I want to help as many people as I possibly can. And so I saw podcasting as a fantastic medium to do that. So I got started, got the podcast together. One thing that surprised me, and um, well, actually not just surprised me, blew my mind was how easy it was to do. I, in my head, had this thing that it was going to be a really complicated procedure. You were going to have to be super techie. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what kind of thing I created in my mind and what it was going to be like, but it was a lot simpler than I had imagined. And I also found it even more fun than I imagined. You know, I kind of thought I was going to have to plan. It's addicting. I know. I, I, I honestly, I thought that it would be like preparing to deliver training. You know, that's my background. I'm an educator. I'm going to run a session. So in my head, I was like, I've got to plan a workshop. You know, I'm going to have to plan right. all this content uh, and put. And it was just really easy. I realized that my most popular ones were the ones where I was just sharing, giving information, but doing so in a in a conversational manner, like you and I having a chat at the moment. And it was just so exciting. I love it. I had to put it on pause for a couple of years because I went and took a job as a director at a university. But I've come back to it very, very recently. Uh, and, I, and I cannot believe the momentum of how quickly it's getting downloads and subscribers to it without me Absolutely. having yet even done any promotion whatsoever. I haven't had a chance. So I, I think there's a lot to be said for the fact that if it's there, you're going to get found. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Tell us, you know, Michael, what is it for you that is so powerful, so important, so exciting about podcasting? Why did you get into it? And why have you dedicated your career to helping other entrepreneurs get on the podcasting platform? 
Well, I think really what it comes down to is, you know, and you said it a minute ago, you know, some of your best episodes are just when you're having a chat, just when you're, when you're being yourself. And I think, you know, what, what, what really gets me out of bed in the morning is the ability to help people break down some barriers so that they can be themselves. And then when they're, when they're truly themselves in the, in the space of a podcast, so that, that, you know, I always, I always tell people to sort of take it down to how the listener listens you know, headphones are on or the earbuds are in that sort of thing. And when it's done right, it's such an intimate experience. So when you have this, this moment where a person is, and again, I really, you know, your podcast coach is really about coaching people to, to maybe sometimes be a little more vulnerable, go a little bit deeper with their content, because when you do that and you connect with somebody, that is such a powerful medium. I take nothing away from all the other media in the world. You know, I do a lot of stuff on YouTube and obviously we're doing video and audio today, but when it, when it comes right down to the moment of audio, when, um, you know, and I, it's funny because I, I shared the story with you in email, when you told the story with the other woman about, you know, you said that no matter what, if I had to clean toilets, I would do it for my family and to, and to support my family. Um, that resonated with me one, because I feel the same way, but in that moment I had my AirPods in, I was, I think I was riding my bike through town and I just, I had a moment. I don't even, I didn't even know you, but I had that moment. I connected with you and that's what makes podcasts so powerful is that when you connect with somebody, you're connecting on such an incredibly deep level. So that's why when I, like you, like what you said a moment ago, sort of that dedication to help people tell a story to help people tell their story because that power of connectedness that power of relatedness goes so deep it goes you know and again you can do great interviews you can do those things but it's that that connectedness that relatedness that i think really is the core of why podcasts are so popular right now i love that you know that that, that whole storytelling thing for me as an educator it's something i've had to learn and i've really had to practice to get good at because i'd come from a world where we're passing on facts information things like that right. and uh, i i used to sort of be really stuck in my ways when i went into becoming a keynote speaker that i would come up and i would present rather than keynote keynote speak you know the keynote speakers are far more about weaving a story and a journey into what it is that the, the main lesson they're teaching and I really struggled with that I, and I think a lot of course creators educators that are listening to today's show um, can probably relate um, but what I have found through my own experience is very much the same thing the more I've shared about me and about my real life rather than just the information that people are coming to me for the, the more connection I have felt with my community and the more my community has turned into a community rather than just a group. Um, and things have to be said right. for practicing and developing that storytelling skill, which doesn't have to be, you know, like this, this perfect hero's journey. You know, it literally can just be, <laughs> I've moved house this week. It's been really sucky and I can't believe how many spiders are here, right? Compared to where I was living before. <laughs> it, isn't it? it just share, sharing little snippets of our real life. I noticed you've got a, a, a book on your favorites list, actually, that um, I've very recently read only about two weeks ago. Absolutely loved it uh, on this topic, the building a story brand. Um, so that's a, that's a fantastic book for anyone I think who's new to how do we market in a way that's not buy my stuff? How do we market right. in a way that makes people just want to jump in and, um, and go on an adventure with us? That's a great yeah, word. the building the building a story brand. Uh, it's funny because you, you I heard you say a, a moment ago the hero's journey, and that's such the sort of the typical storytelling. Um, and and you know Donald Miller from Story Brand um, and a lot of entrepreneurs will use sort of that story concept uh, for what they do. Um, but it's funny I've I've noticed with with a lot of a lot of times with podcast is they say well I'm going to tell a great story but then it's just like well, how quickly can I sell you my course or how quickly can I do that and I always try to remind people just to allow listeners to know who you are yes you want to tell them all day what you do but allow them to know who you are because when they know who you are even like you said I moved to a house and there's spiders everywhere or I live in a place that, you know, I, I come from the coast and now I'm living in a high desert and I'm dealing with allergies that I've never had in my life, you know, but those types of things allow a listener to have that connection. Like I talked to, you know, that relatedness, whatever it is, you know, so that's why, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that excited me about this conversation with you is the concept of the entrepreneur and these, you know, the, the, not just a course creator, but somebody that cares so much about something that they've dedicated their life to teaching it. 
Well, that's the same passion that's inside. So it's just a matter of tapping into those passions, whether you use the hero's two journeys or you just tell a story about what you had for breakfast. It's about that relatedness that, that when you do it right and when you really sort of practice that and have those vulnerable moments, oh, it just, it makes podcasts so amazing. It makes storytelling and it makes the relationship so much more powerful. I love it. You know, it's actually really funny. We're talking about this right now because having just moved to this brand new town, I, I just, I've gone so far. I don't know a single person here at all. And I have to admit, I've been so lonely this week. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Sitting here feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> I literally felt like a lost sock. Well, anyway, um, I, last night I had a may have had a glass of wine in hand, um, feeling sorry for myself. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to my town's Facebook page. You know, it, all these uh, all these towns have little Facebook groups now for yeah. community news and views and things like that. And I thought, I'm going to be that crazy town person. And I'm just going to pop a post saying, does anyone want to be my friend? <laughs> I, mean, I had to finish a couple more wines before I was brave enough to do it. But I decided to just That's put great. some more into it to just try and avoid looking too desperate. And I did actually did right, kind of tell a little story. And I and I put this mem of uh, one of those minions with a, a crazy hat on. Uh, and right. just, I, this is going to come across as the craziest lady post ever, but I'm lonelier than a lost sock. And I'm sure I can't be the only one. And then I just put like a weird dating profile about myself. I <laughs> put things like, I really like wine too much. <laughs> like point number two, um, uh, my hobby works a lot. Uh, I will phone you irrationally mad at him about something ridiculous. Uh, so but you better be ready to come around for wine when that happens. We can swap lost socks. Yeah, and I feel like I was trying to put all these hilarious things that were ridiculous. But honestly, the main, amount of messages I got back absolutely blew my mind because people were going, ha, ha, ha. I also get mad at my husband for no reason whatsoever. We should totes meet up, you know? <laughs> and it just, people connected with some of the things they said, like, oh my gosh, you are so me. And now I've got a whole heap of girlfriends that I'm about to go and meet, um, which is going to be amazing. So it doesn't have to be hard, does it? You drop those little things that show people that you're as human as they are. Um, and yeah. boom, we connect. Right. And, it, and sometimes it is literally that simple. You know, I mean, uh, as a husband, I will defend the husbands, but sometimes we say <laughs> stupid things and sometimes we're idiots. And I realize that because my wife would probably have responded on that board going, let me tell you about my husband. <laughs> You know, but it's funny because even just what you said a moment ago, I mean, here we're leading very parallel lives. We've been, you know, kind of both in new towns. We don't know anybody. And I think last week for me, I was just like, you know, I have to get out of the house a lot, take walks, you know, go work, you know, try to go to my local coffee shop and things like that. And I'm in a new town and I'm like, oh, I don't know anybody. And I just like for a couple of days, I just was like, oh, what did I do? Why am I here? You know, you sort of go through those moments of self-doubt, but it's funny. I only say that because you just shared a story that I immediately related to. And, you know, it makes me think about, I think something that I may have said to you, um, you know, whenever I first emailed you, my background is actually broadcast radio. So I spent 20 years talking on the radio and what I found so fascinating, this is before podcasts were a thing, is that we would, you know, have these big talk shows and we would spend hours and hours and hours, you know, crafting these big, you know, uh, segments and bits and that sort of thing. But when people would come up to me, they would always say, oh my gosh, that day when you were talking about being stuck in traffic, that was the funniest thing. And I'm like, I don't even <laughs> remember saying that, That's you know, is there, remember. <laughs> But the P, but that's the thing is that, 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 that was one of those moments for me that I was like, okay, as podcasts really started in, you know, 2013, 2014, 2015, when you started to see this thing rise, it sort of occurred to me that, that the same thing holds true. It's that if you can tell a great story that is just simply relatable, it doesn't have to be a Charles Dickens story or whatever. It just has to be, have that sense of relatedness that people will connect with you and then they'll feel something. They'll laugh. They'll, they'll carry on about their husband or their wife or what they had for breakfast or getting stuck in traffic. And it just brings, it, it's literally brings a sense of connection. Love it. So we obviously want to be comfortable with the fact that we can just share ourselves. We can share our stories. We can obviously as entrepreneurs, course creators also share our knowledge and our tips. So if I was to be starting from scratch, uh, anyone listening today who's like, right, um, I think I'm ready for this. What's one of the first things you kind of get them to think about before they make the decision for going all in on the podcast? 
I would, I always ask people why, you know, what is your reason? Like, like, is it, is it, are you checking a box? And, and I get this a lot with clients who say, well, I just, I'm, I guess it's what I have to do. And I always back them up and say, okay, well, yeah, it, it's a great, it's like we discussed a few minutes ago, it's a great source for growing your audience and building your brand and all these things. But when you, you know, ask you, go, go a couple of levels deeper. And if you're just kind of doing it and you're lukewarm about it, I actually recommend you don't do it at that point. Find a, a deeper reason to do it. And you know, I, 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 I think if you ask yourself why, and you can't come up with a good enough answer, then just step away. Maybe you spend some more time doing some Instagram stuff or some YouTube stuff, but when you're ready to really go deep into why you do what you do, why you teach what you teach, why you love what you love, that's where having a podcast comes in. It is very easy to do. It's very easy to get started. It's that sort of thing. It's addictive. Like we talked about a little while ago. But when you, when you do it, and again, I'm kind of like, this is my way of doing it. And this is the way I coach people to do it. And I want you to be, you know, the, the act of publishing a podcast episode has a sense of vulnerability to it and that sort of thing. But when you do that, when you ask yourself why, and you go, Hey, I really want to do this because this is how I can connect with people, you know, in a bigger way, in a deeper way. Well, now you're on to something. So kind of that first thing is why, and just making sure you're doing it, you know, cause it's the right thing for you. And then it's really about just, you know, I, I recommend equipment that costs about 200 US dollars. And I always say to people, you can spend a couple of hundred dollars, you can spend a little less, you can spend a lot more, but you can spend a little bit of money and sound as good as the biggest names in podcasting. You don't need to spend, you know, a thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, a couple of hundred dollars. You can get, you know, this microphone that I use is a $25 microphone. What? You know, it's yeah, it's a 20, it's, well, I take that back. It's about a $35 microphone, but it's a high quality microphone. You know, it's plugged into a couple of pieces of equipment that go into my computer, That's you know, amazing. and it's just, it's it, but, but what I always tell people is like, yes, you can record, you can do a lot of things with your iPhone. You can, I just listened to your podcast episode today with your guest talking about shooting videos on iPhones. Great stuff, by the way. But as I was thinking about, you know, you can record a podcast on an iPhone, but the problem that you run into is that when people listen to podcasts, they tend to listen to one right after the other after the other. So let's say they're listening to your podcast, good quality, good sound. And then they listen to like a big name podcast, good quality, good sound. But then you put something out there that is not so good. Well, the problem is, is that the listener then thinks, oh, the quality is not so good. It's probably, you, you could have the greatest story in the world, but if a person can't hear it physically hear it mm -hmm. well then you'll never be able to tell a story so i always tell people you can you can literally sound as good as the biggest names in podcasting for 150 to 200 dollars amazing and i know that you've got a gift a special gift for all of the listeners mm -hmm. today as well that includes the information on some of the equipment that you recommend yes, people use to get started on a budget so uh, make sure you stick around because michael's going to be sharing that freebie with us at the end of today's episode all right so uh we can uh think of our why know why we're doing this so that we have the passion to move forward and yeah, that's important for a lot of reasons which i'm sure you'll share with you one of the things that i found is um you know just because you, there is a commitment to it. <laughs> you've, you've got to keep putting stuff out there. Um, and of course, it's not just the fun bit of jumping on here and having great chats with wonderful people. You, you've, got it, you've got the editing to do. You've got the platform to, to manage and to put everything together. Um, it does take a little bit of time. It takes a bit of work. So, you know, you have to be absolutely certain you want to jump in on this thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, you do. And, and what I try to encourage people, you know, because most of the people that I work with are business owners and entrepreneurs. There are a lot of services out there that will do most of the work for you. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to edit audio, or I don't know how to use this software, or that software, you know, really what it comes down to is you just need to be able to get you know, a good microphone, something that sounds good, as I said a little while ago, so that you're at the same level as the biggest names in podcasting, and then something to record it into in your computer. And you could use, you know, QuickTime Player, or uh, there's some free software and stuff that I'll tell you about at the end. Um, so it's really not that complicated. And then you can either choose to do the editing and the publishing yourself, or you can pay somebody to do that. But I will tell you that honestly, once you, it's just like anything in life, once you do it a couple of times, you're like, oh, wow, this is actually very easy. Um, it's just, you want to make sure that you, you 
balance the time so that you do it. And the big thing I'll tell you, and this is the, uh, this is sort of the killer of all podcasts is that if you don't plan, I always, I, every person I work with, I always say, think of your first 30 episodes. And they're like, wow, 30 episodes. I, I, I don't, what am I going to talk about for 30 episodes? But if you sit down pen to paper, you don't, you're not putting it in stone, but you say, okay, well, I could talk to this person, but then I could do an episode telling my origin story, or I could do an episode talking about why I got into this business in the first place or whatever those things are for you. You get to that 30 episodes really quick. And when you remember, or when you realize that 45% of all podcasts in Apple Podcasts and Spotify haven't been updated in over a year, wow. which means somebody 45%. got really 45% of all, like, and, and I know I can speak specifically to Apple Podcasts because they're the, the biggest provider, but 45% yeah. have not been updated in over a year. And now some of those are podcasts. Like I have a podcast that I did from 2015 to 2017 that I still keep live, but a lot of those are people that were really gung-ho. We're going to do this. It's going to be the best thing ever. And they get <laughs> on average six episodes in and they run out of steam. Wow. So I'm, yeah. So I always tell people like, if you can just really think about your first 30 episodes mm -hmm. and if you can do that, I mean, like, think about that. If you, if you release every week, that's seven months. If you do seasons, that could be your first three seasons. So really thinking that that gives you the roadmap that that allows you to see sort of down the road with your podcast so that you know, right out of the gate, you're going to have success with it. You're not going to be what they call a pod fader, somebody that gets really, really excited. And then five or six episodes in decides to move on to some other shiny object. I love that, making a clear plan. And uh, yeah, you mentioned a couple of things there, which I'll touch on. You mentioned the origin story. So for those listening who've never heard of an origin story, what, what is that? Um, I'd recommend checking out the book Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. He talks a little yes. bit about what the origin story is and how to craft one of your own. Um, we won't go into that. Maybe that's a, there's a, there's a topic for a future <laughs> podcast episode, building your origin story. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm exactly the same. I find that you know, when you've got a plan, you it's, it, you know where you're going and I'm somebody who I prefer to kind of batch my activities so if I'm going to film online courses for instance I will have all of my course plan completely ready and I will sit in the studio and I will film 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 until the whole lot is done in one go and then send that all off to an editor in one go with my podcasting very very similar I'll plan out what it is that I'm going to do I will batch out all of those uh, sort of next five to ten episodes in one sort of big hit either a day or two um, and then boom I send that whole lot over to an editor um, and they edit and publish it all for me and schedule those episodes to re auto release um, onto the platforms and for it's me the best you know, way to do it what I, yeah, what I found works best for my time. I think when you focus on one activity, you're far more productive. Um, and also for me, I'm very protective of what I spend my time on as a business owner. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. you know, of course I could very quickly and easily um, edit my episodes. Of course I could, it's, it's not um, technically challenging to do. But as a business owner, I believe our time is better spent um, doing strategic activity, um, you know, planning your how you're going to make money <laughs> or making <Absolutely>. money <laughs> rather yes. than doing things that you could potentially outsource for, you know, a few bucks, basically. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. So um, with, you know, people have got their plan, they know what kind of episodes they're going to start talking about. It could be teaching, sharing tips and information, answering core questions from their audience. It could be doing interviews with experts like we're doing today. Um, it mm -hmm. can be simply a bit of storytelling, sharing experiences of your own um, and lots of other things that you could be talking about in podcasts. So what would somebody do next? I mean, let's say do we go straight now to, to software? Um, and if there is, what kind of software out there uh, would you recommend to a newbie? Well, I think at this point, you know, kind of as I think about the steps and, and, and one of the crucial steps that sort of gets lost in, in this and back to the, you know, sort of imagine the entrepreneur that's gung ho and they, they go crazy and they're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then six episodes, they, they, they fade away um, is just practice is once you get the, the you know the the couple of hundred dollars and you get the really really nice microphone and you're you're set and ready to go and you use you know to your to your point about software 
Um, I use the Adobe suite, so I use Audition, uh, but there's free software called Audacity. Um, and again, you could record into like QuickTime on your Mac and things like that. So there's a the garage band is another thing. If you have, a, if you're a Mac user, yeah. you know, but I'm once you get major for mine as well, when, um, when I'm just doing audio only. So uh, mm -hmm. any video editors listening or anyone could doing course creating, if you have software that you're using to film and edit your online course videos, it also works for doing your audios for your podcast yes, episodes as well. Yeah. So that's the thing is that really, I mean, you're not trying to, you know, you're not trying to, you know, find the newest flashiest software, use what works. Cause you're really, all you're trying to do is get an MP3 file of your, not to get too in the weeds, but MP3 files are what we use to upload, to get our podcasts on our iPhones and our Samsungs and our Androids all over the world. So really in that first crucial step, once you kind of have, okay, I've got my equipment set up. Uh, I always just say practice take a couple of days and just get used to talking into a microphone, get used to being, you know, as I say, sometimes being in a room by yourself, talking to yourself, talking through ideas, talk and like have fun with it. I, I, I give people scripts, but I always tell people just pretend like you're in the middle of an episode, pretend like you're in the middle of a story and just start talking because what happens is, um, for all the for all the stuff that we do on social media with images and with videos and YouTube and everything, people have a little trouble with the sound of their own voice. Mm -hmm. And I've just found that if you just kind of get into a room and start recording and then listen to what you sound like and get over that first like, ooh, do I really sound like that? Mm -hmm. You know, sort of kind of have fun with it, get over it. Because all you're doing there is you're just getting comfortable because when the time then comes to start recording episodes, you're not, you, you, you've kind of got past the shyness and you've maybe taken a, a leap beyond being timid. And now you're in a place where you're ready to do it. Now, granted, I work with people who are like, let's go. I, I, I can talk all day. I also respect the fact that not everyone is that way. And the easiest way to overcome some of those initial obstacles about, can I do this or overcoming some fear is just to sit with a microphone and a recorder and just start talking. And when you do that, you find that you get into a flow and you get into a rhythm. I'm sure very much like the courses that you've done over the years. I even heard you talking about it in your podcast episode is you have to kind of get warmed up a little bit and you get warmed up and then you get going. But once you get going, it feels great. So really okay. in sort of that, that next step is to just kind of get in there and practice and make a few mistakes. And no, I, I always say nobody's ever going to hear this audio, but it's actually fun to record everything and keep it. So that when you're like a big podcast superstar, these are your outtakes from whenever, before you ever published any episodes. So, but really kind of that next step is just to kind of get in there and get comfortable and, and have fun so that you can feel what it feels like to do a podcast. Amazing. And there's also nothing quite like that feeling of uh, going into your back end dashboard and seeing that lots of people have subscribed and downloaded. That's just, it's such a buzz going, the reason I started this is actually happening. You know, people are, I'm helping people, people are, are, are hearing information. This is, it's so exciting when you get, it's such a buzz. It never, it never stops. Well, and I'll tell, I will tell you this because I've, I, I experienced this myself, but I've had multiple clients say this to me is they say, okay, well, I, you know, I just published my first five episodes and I'm seeing the downloads come in. This is fascinating. But then they look at their phone and they look on Apple or Spotify or Google play and they see their podcast and then they show their kids. I have two teenagers. So when my daughter saw that dad's on Spotify, it's like, <laughs> whoa, dad, you're really on Spotify. So now I, I, this is a true story. I actually, not too long ago, I heard my daughter say, yeah, dad's on Spotify. And I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> yes. life achieved at that point. Right. So that is so, that is gold, honestly. And I'm, you know, that's so funny because you're saying that I literally had that exact same moment. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's me. My, I have a thing. Uh, it's very, yes. very exciting. Love it. And so, you know, there's a few other little kind of admin things that uh, surprised yes. me. 
not surprise me, but you know, I kind of, I was the, I was that gung ho one. I was like, I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to do it now. Rah, I like jumped straight in without any planning whatsoever properly. And it kind of, I figured everything out along the way rather than sort of mapped out, right. What's the journey I'm going to go on? What are each of the steps I'm going? No, I'm just like, I'm in, I'm swimming. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. I, let's so go. I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. Hang on a minute. I need an opening jingle. Oh, right. hang on a minute. I need the podcast cover image. Oh, hang on a minute. I need, you know, where do I host it all? Um, oh, do I want a separate website for my podcast? Like all these kind of things came up and I and I was real slapdash and I did actually waste a bit of money on the way because I was like, yeah, I want a whole separate website just for my podcast. Well, that was a stupid idea. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, it was, I mean, it's not a stupid idea for everyone, of course, but you know, for me, I was just so excited about making it a thing that I, I went in deeper than I needed to. Um, right. you know, and I later found out, you know, I got the uh, jingle done on someone by someone on Fiverr, you know, five bucks, somebody made my jingle for me on Fiverr. You know, I got someone, my first podcast cover, um, I got done on Fiverr. You know, those things I was smart about. I was like, just go with the minimum viable product for now. And, you know, I can change it later on. Um, but we don't have to be like all in on this stuff, building websites and stuff, right? No, no. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned Fiverr. That's a great resource. And what I would say to that, though, is, you know, um, it's I forget the percentage, but a high percentage of people discover podcasts through the artwork. And we don't really think about that. We think, okay, well, we got to create great content and we need to have good, you know, good quality and that sort of thing. But, you know, spending you know, and again, you can do it for $5, you can do it for $10, but that thumbnail artwork that you create for your podcast will help with discoverability. And I think a lot of times people are, you know, yeah, not so much now. I think, you know, if you rewind the tape a couple of years, you scan, you know, through podcasts and you see some pretty amateur looking thumbnails. And I think people are like, realize that you can go on Fiverr and get a really nice thumbnail for $5. But, you know, go ahead and spend the time just to make sure the artwork is good. I don't think you need an extra website. You know, a tab on your existing website is fine. And for some people, they don't even do a website. It's just, you know, you can discover this podcast through Apple Podcasts or however people listen. And then when the time is right, maybe you add a tab to your existing website for show notes and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. not everybody has a huge team of people or they can't do editors at the time. So it's really about like, okay, what can you, you, you talked MVP a moment ago, what can you do to kick off your podcast with the absolute bare essentials? You know, don't go crazy. Don't think you've got to have like everything all figured out, you know, get the right things figured out, get your description, right. Get the artwork, right. Make sure you get the publishing, which we can talk about, but really it's like, do you have the story to tell? Do are, are, do you have the roadmap set? Are you going to start your podcast? You know, you mentioned Russell Brunson a minute ago. I, I heard Russell Brunson talk about six months ago and I found the same thing is that for people that talk and people that just start the podcast, but they keep going, it's usually around the 30th episode that they kind of get a groove. Like if you, if you skip the practicing, if you don't take any of my advice, you just jump right in, but you keep going about episode 30, you're going to get into, you know, that really good flow, that really good groove. Now, you can get there a lot quicker by practicing and following the coaching that I'm doing, you know, but know that if you can kind of get into it and sort of, you know, uh, do the right things first, you're good. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I wish I hadn't jumped straight into doing a website, building everything at first time round. That's what I did. And obviously, like I said, I took that two year break uh, to go and work at the university. And when I came back to, to doing this podcast very recently, I was like, do you know what? I've just realized that all that matters are those episodes, you know, getting the yep. audio out there is what's more important than all of the other stuff. Um, but this time around, I'm a bit more organized and I took things a bit more <laughs> with a bit more planning. And so uh, I've been doing business, that, doing, doing this the smart way because our time's limited and we need to have as much reach as possible if we're building a business behind everything that we're doing. Um, so I found what's working for me is like you mentioned, I've put a, just put a tab on my own existing website saying podcast, which will mm -hmm redirect people there. I also um, video record all of my episodes and have obviously have the audio recording. Audio recording goes up onto the various distribution channels and I put the video with all of the show notes 
on my blog. So I'm actually using this content to fill my blog up, but I upload the video to YouTube and I embed the YouTube video into the blog post, meaning my website's now getting more traffic. It's coming up in more search results if those episodes are being typed into Google. So more traffic for the site, more SEO for the site. Um, when people are then reading the blog, they're watching the YouTube video. So my YouTube video is getting more views, which means that my YouTube channel is being boosted and of course, potentially getting more subscribers. So I've just found that, you know, being a bit smart with how you use this content means that the time you're spending, you know, so you and I sat here chatting today, you know, this is time from our businesses at the moment. So it does have to, um, work as hard for you as possible in, in return. <laughs> and that's what I found. This organic content is invaluable for you in, in putting down lots and lots of roots all over the place in many, many ways that come back to you and your business, your products and your services. So I, this is another reason why I just love podcasting because it creates so much extra content for me for SEO, for organic marketing purposes. It's just amazing. That's the best model. Everything you just described, I wish, and you know, and I will admit vulnerably that, that I, over the last few months have let that slip a little bit in my world, but everything you just said that, you know, down to the YouTube videos and the way it can help with SEO, um, transcribing your podcast, which creates all sorts of benefits for SEO. And, and all we're doing is we're taking this one moment and repurposing it in all these different ways to help more eyes, more ears, more people come to your business. Absolutely, 100% with everything you just said. It's so, it's so powerful. Beautiful. Well, we're getting close to the end of this episode today. So um, sort of what would be the next sort, sort of final stages that uh, our newbie podcasters would have to think about before they get going? Well, yeah. I mean, really kind of where we are is like, you've got the equipment, you've been practicing. Well, really at that point, it's okay. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to do every week? Do you want to do a season where you do 10 episodes and then take a couple of months off that sort of thing? Do you want to do a lot of interviews? So you just kind of want to figure out what those episodes sound like. And again, you don't need, I mean, there's, there are people out there that do two hour long podcast episodes you know, I always tell people, if you keep it around 25 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe some of your episodes are 17 minutes. Some of them can be 35. There's no, it has, it doesn't have to be exactly 30 minutes every time, you know, you can sort of break down those barriers, but just thinking about what those episodes are. And just like we're doing today, we're having a conversation. That's a podcast interview. You know, it doesn't have to be over complicated. You can over edit it where it almost doesn't even sound natural. So allow conversations to be what they are, but really for that newbie podcaster, thinking about what you want your episodes to sound like. And one of the things I'm going to, I'm going to give you at the very, very end is some episode templates that allow you to sort of plug and play. Okay. Well, this is an yeah. interview style episode, or this is going to be a solo episode or an, or I even have an origin story template in there, but then really it's about, you know, deciding, okay, how much can I truly give to a podcast. And that's why most of the people that I work with do seasons. So they'll do one new episode a week for say eight to 10 weeks. And then they take a breather for a couple of months or sometimes 10 weeks on 10 weeks off, but that 10 weeks off sort of gives them breathing room, but it also gives them time to start planning and preparing and recording interviews for the next season. Whereas if you can't do every week, then don't do every week. You know, or if you can't, if you can't, because it's really important to be consistent. It's so important to be consistent. It's so important to do what you say you're going to do to your listener. So if you say we're going to do every week, then do every week. But if you can do seasons, which are oftentimes very manageable, then just do that. And then you've got a nice season one, a nice season two, a nice season three. But then once you sort of figure that out, then it's just doing the work. It's recording the episodes. It's going out, getting the interviews, you know finding the people to talk to. And that always takes a little bit of work, a little bit of time. That's why I recommend don't try to do a hundred percent interviews right out of the gate. Get that confidence to do some episodes where you tell your story or you tell a story about what's happening in your business or your world, because those are just so much easier to do because you just go in and hit record and start talking about whatever it is that is your subject matter or your passion. And then once that's done, I, I think sort of the, the bow on all of this is that if you're a newbie and you're excited and you're at this point, set a launch date. 
set that date in the future, whenever it, you will have probably already set it at this point, but then start promoting to that date. You know, if it's March 1st or June 1st or whatever it is and start leading up to that moment so that there's some pomp and circumstance around your actual podcast release. And that gets, that gets your name out there. That gets people talking about it, you know, and there's a few tips in there that, you know, always release with more than one episode on launch day and things like that. But really it's just, once you start recording and you get it, you know, a hosting platform, which will publish to all these other places, which I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but basically once you do that, you've got a podcast. You do. And it's going to be so much fun. Amazing. Look, this is this has been incredible. And I really hope and I'm sure that this is going to have inspired lots and lots of people. I know there's heaps of course creators out there who are considering repurposing, for instance, some of their course training videos, just simply resaving those videos as MP3s and, um, you know, adding an opening, adding an ending. Boom. You know, there's a lot of course creators listening who actually already have more than enough content to immediately launch a podcast without having to do very much work. Right. Um, so it's, it's incredible how you know, both your podcasting can help inform and add value to your courses and your courses can add content to your podcast. So um, course creators, this is a really powerful tool and something that uh, should come very naturally to you as, as teachers and educators anyway so um we have a gift for you from michael today for anyone who's thinking about a podcast or maybe already has one that you want to kind of take to the next level um michael how can people get hold of that gift there if uh, you're reading this there is a link in the description area yes. but for those listening yeah it's my website if you just go to yourpodcastcoach.com but then put forward slash sarah your name uh s-a-r-a-h make sure the h is on the end yourpodcastcoach.com forward slash sarah what i've put on there is i've got a bunch of freebies i've got a seven day podcast workshop where you're going to get a new email every day answering big podcast questions these are questions some of the stuff that we've talked about but go a little bit deeper in like how your podcast shows up on spotify and what software you can use. And I've also got a studio checklist in there, which I break down the exact equipment that you need so that you too can have a professional sounding studio for a couple of hundred dollars, you know, depending on what microphone you buy. Again, I always tell you, you can spend a lot of money on it, but you don't have to. Um, I've got the episode templates in there, which make it very easy when you're at that stage where you want to build an episode, you just plug and play those in there. I've got a couple of webinars that I've done that were really sort of my biggest webinars that really talk about common mistakes people make. So I'm going to give that to you for free. Um, and then one thing that I want to do just for your audience is that over the course of like the next 30 days or so, uh, as people register for this and grab this free material, I'm going to start taking down names. I'm going to pick five people and five people I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with. So I will pick the names. I will contact you. And really what I find is people want to know, hey, am I doing this right? Is my idea any good? What do I do here? What do I do there? So I find it's just, you know, I would 90% of the work that I do is coaching. So I decided, you know what? I actually had this decision today. It's like, let's just do five. I was going to do one, but I was like, let's just do five. So it will be a 30 minute session. We jump on a zoom call. You just go, Hey, my idea is this, or my idea is that we talk it through. And I find that that gives people that, you know, with the free resources. And if you get one of the coaching sessions, really at that point, you're unstoppable at that point, you are good to go. So it's your podcastcoach.com forward slash Sarah. Amazing. I am definitely going to be signing up to get myself into that as well. I, I believe truly we can never, ever stop learning. Things always change. So even when we think we know how to do something, I just, I'm a, I'm a learning junkie myself. So I'm going to totally be signing up to that. Very generous, Michael. Thank you very much indeed. Now, if you want to, uh, any, info, more, any more information on any of the things that we discussed today, all of the links and notes will be in the comments description area below. And of course, you can reach out to Michael or myself directly. And if you want to start your own online courses, create a profitable income stream for yourself, reach more people, I too have a gift. So you can grab my free course creation starter kit, which takes you through the 10 steps of creating your very own profitable online course. It's completely free. And you can grab that at sarahcordner.com forward slash starter kit. And uh, I will take you through how to get your course out of your head and out into the world, helping people and making you money. Thank you very much for your time today, Michael. It's been amazing having you here and I look forward to seeing all of you guys next time. See you soon.